You're watching the Auction Network. For decades, baseball has been called America's pastime. The sport has known many iconic players and great teams, and its rich history has endeared fans for generations. The Auction Network is taking you to one of baseball's holiest sites, the Louisville Slugger Museum and Factory, for its annual auction of amazing artifacts. For the fourth consecutive year, Pennsylvania-based Hunt Auctions and Louisville Slugger team up for a baseball memorabilia auction with hundreds of vintage cards, autographs, and jerseys up for grabs. It's a must-see event for top collectors. It evolved into a week-long of events as you know, the party with Ken, honoring Ken Griffey Jr. and the appraisal fair and, and all the different things and the people that fly in just to be here for the event. Even if they're not bidding, we've actually had clients tell us they're just here there's nothing in this particular auction for them, but to come to Louisville Slugger Museum to see all the great bats and the history of the, of the bat itself, and then to watch the auction. They're just here for a great event. And that tells you that you've really kind of created something special. So there's something in it for everybody. You can be a hobbyist, you can be a collector, you can be a collector and an investor. People that spend money in this business probably love the game and love the history. They don't just buy it to own it and sell it, unless you're a dealer. Okay, this is a 1984 Eddie Murray Baltimore Orioles jersey. Um, kind of going through it, this is a, a, a knit, a polyester knit from the, from the 80s. 70s, 80s is when they became prevalent. What you have on here is also an interesting patch, which always adds a little bit of value when you have a unique patch. And this celebrated the 30th anniversary of the Orioles, which also helps you to date it because it's 1984. This is a somewhat unique shirt because when we originally were authenticating it, the authentication company that we used found that it was very, very uncommon, if not somewhat unheard of, to have a Rawlings manufacturer for an Orioles jersey. And that can be a problem, actually. You want to, when you have an anomaly, anomaly like that, it's not to say that it's not authentic, but it is something you have to look at. Through some bitter input, actually, we were fairly sure that this was actually a shirt worn by Murray during a tour of Japan. I tell you, that looks like our... Uh Japan jersey there, or either our following year after winning the World Series. Uh, that's neat. It, it, it's neat. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's flattering. It, it, it's flattering. It's embarrassing. I came here today, and he pointed it out downstairs. I looked at it, and you know how you can just, I can remember the color of it. Uh, you can remember this, uh, the emblem on the sleeves, and uh, you know, those are fun times. There was never any question about the jersey being authentic and the fact that he wore it. The question was, when did he wear it, and why was, why was that Rawlings tag on there versus the other manufacturer tags? Well, I, I love David's sales. They're always very diverse. They're, uh, they're one of the only live auctions in, in our industry. Um, it's a good place to network. The quality of the material is the best in the nation, so you, you always have a good selection. You know, authenticity is never really a question. Sports memorabilia is a multi-million dollar industry, but it's not without controversy. Reports show that many autographs are fakes, so true collectors often rely on accredited auction houses for authenticity. Major auction houses are always the safest because they've got a track record, they've been around a while, they've got return policies, they've got guarantees, they bring in outside experts such as myself to look at stuff for them. Uh, the stuff has been submitted, they've got a reputation, they've got a physical address, and as such, they're, they're held accountable. Something we like to do at larger venue events that we conduct, such as Louisville Slugger or the All-Star Game, is we do an appraisal fair. It's something that we can kind of give back a little bit to the, to the people that have hosted us and, and do an event that's going to bring visitors to their venue. Uh, and it's fun. It's just interesting to see what comes out of people's closets. All right, you want to authenticate this shirt. We know it's being purported to be a 1939 Joe Gordon, New York Yankees home pinstripe. Name and collar, Jay Gordon. Jay Gordon was a, was a, Joe Gordon was a great player with the Yankees. So we look at the neck to make sure the name hasn't been changed. Next thing we do is we measure the size of the Spalding tag. We know the era, we'll, we'll nail down the era. So we want to make sure that this tag is consistent with the era of 1939. And now I look at this fabric, and even without a magnifying glass, I see things going on here. This felt should have been on, should have the same age as this. So the next thing you do is you put these two together and look to see if there's consistency and feel. If I was to give you an evaluation of this shirt right now, I'd say it's a 39 hole. This is original, and y has been replaced, the original patch has been restored. Now you may say, well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is if this was all original, it's worth between twenty and $25,000. If it's restored, and we do our final evaluation, it's 
worth between three and four thousand dollars, about 20, 25 percent of the perceived value. So no one wants to look for it. It can be huge. 850, 900. So now 16, 15, nobody gets 16, all the way to 1600. You're out at 16. 16,000, all the way to 15, nobody gets 16,000. Baseball cards is the, is the bottom line, is the anchor of this business. Baseball cards and the related material it probably covers about 80 to 90 percent of what trades hands in the sports memorabilia industry. Followed by autographs, which takes up the other, you know, 10 to 20 percent, depending on how you split it up. With gaming's memorabilia at best being five percent of the total market for sports memorabilia. I would say in this year's auction, you know, there are lots of great items. There really are, but need, you know, kind of needless to say, the Lou Gehrig 1938 home New York Yankees jersey has kind of stolen the show, if you will. Uh, just pristine original condition. A beautiful piece with you know everything you want as an auctioneer: impeccable provenance, condition, you know, player caliber. It's got everything going for it that you could want, uh, and we expect it to bring about a quarter million dollars, if not more. The Louisville Slugger Auction is the highlight of the year for many baseball fans, but as we'll see later, it's bittersweet for others as this family gives up their link to baseball forever. This is my grandfather's jersey from the 1928 uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, again. Uh, a, a bit old, a bit tattered the way it should be. I hope uh, someone would, uh, a collector, possibly a museum, would be very interested in uh, displaying and again passing on that heritage from uh, 50 or 60 years ago. When you're dealing with players' families such as Joe DiMaggio, Roy Campanella, you kind of gain an understanding of what the family really wants, what they need out of the auction as well, not just from a pricing and a sales standpoint, but how their, their family member's name is represented. Time to buy some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. We'll be right back with more from Hunt Auctions 2007 Louisville Slugger Museum and Factory Auction. To register for future live auctions, go to auctionnetwork.com.